two, three. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be like service dog puppy essential gear kind of. I don't know what I'm titling this video. I honestly had the idea to do this like just really randomly. This video is not planned out like at all. So oh my God, why am I so stressed? here we are. Also my self confidence is extremely low right now because my face is breaking out. I haven't brushed my hair in a long time. I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Stella. I have an 11 month old standard poodle service dog in training. Today's video is going to be like essential gear for service dogs or like service prospects. I'll find a video and link it in the description that has like a list of everything you need for bringing a puppy home. But this is going to be more, more geared, get it? Gear, geared <laughs> towards service dogs. Under the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, service dogs do not need to be labeled. That being said, I think it's like super important to label your dog. And then if you're staying it allows service dogs and training to go into non-pet friendly places it's still not required to label them but i think it's gonna cause more problems than just labeling them recently i've gotten a little wrapped up in like the gear aspect of the service dog world i have been spending so much money the like service dog gear world is kind of like an overwhelming thing i feel like i personally have a lot of gear and i have like a lot of gear on the way i buy a lot of gear i spend pretty much all my money on gear for finnegan i love gear i think it's like a really fun way to express yourself but i think there's like a little thing where people that are new to the community it could be definitely overwhelming like seeing all of these six month old dogs wearing these custom vests and i think like the lines get blurred between like what you need what's essential and like just stuff that you want hi buddy come up here you just ran away you're just ignoring me java come here so I'm gonna stop rambling now and we're gonna get right into the gear. The first thing is a puppy vest. So I'll link all the stuff that I'm showing you guys in the description box. I'm gonna look for like the least expensive options. So this is your basic Amazon vest. I think this is like an essential to help get your dog used to wearing a vest. There's a lot of stigma around this vest and like this vest means your dog's a fake, but when your dog is in training, I feel like obviously you're not gonna have some like super expensive custom vest. Try and get over that like judgment of others, like the fear of judgment if your dog's wearing this because it's not the vest that makes a service dog a service dog. I actually like this vest like it's really versatile and it works really well. Like, it's actually like high quality like it's kind of padded and it has reflective strip. The one I'll link below will probably have two in training one so as you can see this says in training so it comes with two in training and two service dog. That is the first thing. Another alternative to that vest once he grew out of that instead of just getting a bigger size of that I got like semi custom and this is actually pretty inexpensive I would say this one is just like I got the base and then sewed on the patches so you can get custom patches to say whatever and it's just like a little different than like your basic Amazon vest you can also do like any color they have any color of the base and you can get custom patches any color you want if I wanted to he could wear this vest for the rest of his career because it's so adjustable like I haven't cut the straps and you can adjust it and it's nice because it has pockets I really like pockets so you can put like emergency medication or ADA law cards or whatever you need to put in there so the reason is I'm not gonna be using this forever like I love it and I'm still gonna use it occasionally but one of the things that I wish was different about this vest is there's no d-rings and you can't add d-rings like you probably could but they don't add them for you I don't know how to do that and I need a pull strap at least and that's why this was kind of like an in-between vest the next thing a flat collar this is biothane I really like this so obviously this wouldn't fit him when he was a puppy I think I went through like two other nylon collars before this one it's dirty right now but like it takes like one second to like wipe it down and then it like looks new I just got a matching biothane leash. Um, you could do like a regular nylon leash. I don't like the feeling of nylon and the biothane is just so sensory friendly. I would wait until they were out of their like chewing stage to get biothane because I think they could chew through it. Because I've had this for a while. It has like a little chew mark right there because I had him placed and I dropped his leash and he like picked it up and started chewing on it a little bit. If your puppy is still in that phase, maybe wait and then get this once they're out of that phase. The next thing would be tools. I think this is essential to have tools that are going to help you with training. 
Obviously don't put a, like a prong collar or an e-collar on like an eight week old puppy, but this is something eventually you're gonna have to invest in. So like consult a trainer on figuring out when to put tools on them. Some other ideas than the ones I'm gonna show you are like halties or gentle leaders. I don't like gentle leaders or a prong collar. I really like prong collars actually. This is the Herm Springer one. Like don't go and get like a prong and an e-collar and all of these tools until you know what works for your dog. You don't wanna like invest all that money. I ended up investing in the mini educator this is not affordable <laughs> like definitely consult with the trainer but this is just an example of a tool that is considered essential in my opinion and it has the like extra long contact points and something else if, if you think an e-collar would be something you should invest in for your dog you don't need to get like I got like a colored skin in this because I wanted it to match you don't have to get all of that stuff okay another tool that I consider essential that I wanted to bring up is a slip lead so this one's really dirty so I don't want to show you the end because I dropped it in mud and it's disgusting but um this is a really good tool for teaching leash pressure. Use this on younger puppies. These are super inexpensive. I'll link one of them on Amazon down below. Like I use it when I'm grooming Finnegan. I use it if I don't want to like put his collar on, just slip that on. Like it's super easy. Poop bags, like a little poop bag holder and poop bags. Because if you have a service dog or service dog in training and you're taking them out places, you want to be cleaning up after them. Next thing is a treat pouch. This one I've had, I've gone through like so many treat pouches a lot <laughs> because I use them so often. Often, and I use them with other dogs and stuff so I just end up going through a lot but this is my favorite one that I think I've ever had it's also kind of dirty I'll link it down below I clip it onto my pants and then it has so many pockets the other thing I love is that something I keep in here is ADA law cards like if you don't want to get a poop bag holder what you can do is just get the poop bag and then put them in here and there's like a little spot to dispense poop bags so that's really convenient and then it just has these little clippies the next thing oh collapsible bowl I think this is pretty essential for any dog this one is also so dirty don't judge it it's disgusting <laughs> i have like i think like three or four collapsible balls because i love them and i think they're really awesome so it's just this one oh my god it's so crusty this one's always clipped to like my backpack or my purse i have one in my car okay the next thing i'm gonna recommend is like essential in my opinion so something i've recently started doing with finnegan is hand feeding i'll link a video if i can find one about hand feeding and the benefits or i'll link an instagram post i really 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 recommend hand feeding with your prospect this is something i recently just started doing and it's made a huge difference there are so many benefits to hand feeding but something that's essential if you're gonna do that in my opinion because i am like sensitive to like certain sensory things and so i have gloves <laughs> so i hate the feeling of his like food it's so icky and gross on my hands the next thing are booties i'll link a video about booties down below about like the benefits of booties for service dogs and training i think they're really helpful i like didn't want to buy two pairs so i just waited until he's full grown and now it's probably gonna be weird to acclimate him to it but he's usually not gear shy so it should be fine the next thing is spray i think this is essential i don't know everyone it might be like one of the less essential things but i literally for some reason i'm like paranoid about like thin smell in public i don't want to take him into public and people like smell him and think he smells bad and like be grossed out i don't know i'm just paranoid so i like to have this just in case i ever freak out about his smell another really essential thing for service dog and training is a crate the crate training is really helpful and good i think that's essential for all puppies but the next thing i wanted to say is a leash wrap because i think it's good to have a leash wrap so this is just like a little one i have it says in training do not distract because it you don't want your dog to rely on constantly training only in a vest that's something i kind of accidentally messed up on with finnegan and he got like a little too reliant on wearing a vest means i behave so having a leash wrap so you can mix it up i think is really helpful and then a clicker i have a video on clicker training and i made that like a while ago i'll link it in the description box i think a clicker is essential for any puppy but especially if you're trying to train your dog which is something you should do always okay so i think that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for watching i will see you guys in the next one <laughs> bye 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 <laughs> So, Remy Fossil. <laughs>